My name is Eric Draper. I'm currently a freelance photographer. I started in photography actually back in uh, my junior college and I, uh, I wanted to learn just art photography at the time. And then a friend of mine talked me into joining the newspaper staff at my junior college. And that's where I kind of fell in love with photojournalism. I worked for several newspapers during my career. The Seattle Times, which was my first job out of college. The uh, Pasadena Star News in California. And then I moved out to New Mexico to work for the Albuquerque Tribune. That newspaper was known for its photo stories and design. Um, and I uh, learned a lot about storytelling and about covering uh, long-term projects. My journey to the White House as the photographer for President George W. Bush was something that really wasn't a plan. It was something that really just kind of presented itself and I decided to uh, kind of go for the opportunity. Back then, when I was a, an Associated Press photographer, I was assigned to be the photographer on the George W. Bush campaign. Back in 2000, the election wasn't decided that night and no one knew which way I was gonna go. And that, that gave me the opportunity to actually think about pursuing the position. So what I decided to do was take a page out of President Bush's playbook because during the campaign, he would always say, I'm gonna look you in the eye and I'm gonna ask you for the job. I wanna be your president. So I had the opportunity because he became president elect back in late December, 2000. And my wife and I were invited to the party. So I thought, you know, this is where I'm gonna make my personal pitch. So at the end of the party, I walked up to him and I said, thank you for inviting us to the party. By the way, I want to be your personal photographer. I looked him in the eye and he didn't blink. <laughs> he looked at me like he never thought about it before and he looked away and it was the longest handshake ever. And he said, uh, you know, I really appreciate that. I'll get back to you. And a week later, I'm sitting in front of Andy Card, the chief of staff back in Austin, Texas, interviewing for the position. And he pretty much hired me on the spot. So it was just one of those uh, kind of lightning strikes. I was in the right place at the right time. And I was a person who didn't know anything about being in the White House or being the personal photographer for, for a president. So I, I had a lot to learn pretty quickly. There is really no typical day in the White House. Uh, every day was an adventure. I did have a routine. I would show up at like 6.30 in the morning and the president would walk down from the residence and walk to the Oval Office around seven o'clock on the dot every day. It was like clockwork. And I would literally just kind of follow him to the Oval Office and wait for his schedule to start. I really had an amazing access throughout the day, throughout all my time in the White House. And I had top secret clearance, and I wasn't there to brief the president. I wasn't there to tell the president what to do. You know, my job was to be the professional observer. The president had a big comfort level with my presence where he could be himself. He didn't have to talk to me, and I would just float in and out and document his day. You know, a lot of times I was so caught up in the moment of being a, the photographer, you know, thinking about the logistics of, of everything. But as long as I was in front of the president, I wouldn't miss anything. And at that moment, you might remember, the president stood on the rubble at Ground Zero in New York City. Uh, I knew that that was a huge moment, just, just because of the emotion of the moment. Minutes before, the president had waded through all the firefighters. He was shaking hands, hugging them. He was crying with them. And they really wanted the president to do something. And when the president stood on the rubble, uh, he had the bullhorn in hand. And the firefighter in the background was screaming, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. And the president really delivered when he said, I can hear you, the world hears you, and the people who knocked these buildings down will hear from all of us soon. And all of the firefighters erupted in cheer, you know, USA, USA. And the, the hair on my neck stood up. It was such a powerful moment uh, that he really lifted the spirits of those firefighters that day. I had the opportunity to document the president as a commander in chief, of course, but also as a father, as a husband, as a son, and as a dog owner. In those moments, documenting the president's humanity for me was fun, just to show people that, hey, he's just like us. And he was all about friends, family, and faith. And those were the things that I tried to tell that story throughout the eight years. Anyone, including the President of the United States or any celebrity is a human. And they all have their gifts of what brought them to their celebrity or whatever position they're in. And that's what I have the opportunity to do with President George W. Bush, to show his humanity, to show even though he was the leader of the free world, in a lot of ways, he was just like us. 
to me, it is important to document human stories, including the presidency, because the people that are deciding on world events, people should know what they're all about. People should understand where they're coming from, and it's important to show those stories. It was a goal for me to capture those human moments because they were storytelling. And that's kind of how I saw the old presidency was a story from the beginning to the end. And um, it's very unique to be able to cover a story that long and that intimately. So it's really an amazing, unique experience.